Good morning, beautiful souls. I'm going to give a tiny Sunday sermon as I share videos of my feral cat. He has made it through the hardest nights of this Midwest winter freeze. And fortunately, the weather is going to warm over the next few days, so he'll receive a break. Now, we have had some challenges trying to get him into the house, and it's very clear that without a clear exit strategy from our home in the form of a propped open door, he simply isn't going to be comfortable being indoors no matter how cold it gets. So here I sit in the entryway teaching him I can be trusted, and you can see in his body language that he is more content to just be by my side, and that's nice. My work in animal welfare has been a lifelong journey, and lifelong journeys often point us to our authentic selves. You see, when I was a little girl, I thought I'd be a veterinarian. I said it for years until one day at school we had a career day, and I learned about part of the job is unaliving unwanted animals, and I was crushed. I really thought my life's dream was over because there was no way I could take the life of a healthy animal whose only crime was being part of a problem that we humans created. But it turns out that the life dream was pointing me to start an organization that would address pet overpopulation. And that organization ended up being a spay-neuter clinic that has now neutered or spayed over 250,000 cats and dogs. You see, I have always believed that our care for the earth and the animals is a direct reflection of our humanity. It is so intricately tied to our spirituality that for me, denying our responsibility for nature reflects a broken spirituality. Still, even when I was deep in evangelical Christianity, I was mocked for my work in animal welfare. Pastors would preach sermons saying, oh, you say what about the animals, but I say what about Jesus? and nonsense like that. And someone leaving a comment like this reflects the same kind of ignorance. But here's the truth. People need a deflection from their own pain, from their own shortcomings, and they need to feel that they are the only ones who know how to do advocacy. Do you see the irony? Do you hear the indoctrination? There is nothing more toxic than white privilege masquerading as a helpful ally. Now, I've been mostly silent as I tend to a 102 degree fever. I'm fine now, but I have watched in absolute amazement and gratitude at those who, without any request from me, stood in the gap to defend me. I've never in my life had that kind of unwavering support, and to think that it came from a space and people who I've never met in person astounds me, because life didn't turn out like I thought when I was going to be a veterinarian. I also thought that someday I'd be a minister of a church. That is where I'd find community, but it turned out that that community rejected me. Here is where I find my community with all of you. It's all connected, beautiful souls. It's all divine. It's all holy. I'm so grateful for each of you. Happy Sunday.